Campfire question. Where we answer your questions about life, the universe, and... Camping. Great question from Elizabeth Bingham. What about ants? All caps. We recently got our camper out of storage and found our mattress topper had an ant nest in it with several more nests along the wall. The ants were all dead, but we kept getting a live one here and there for the rest of the trip. It took several hours to clean up the mess and we never ever want this to happen again. What can be done to stop ants? Yes. In this video, we're going to rattle off steps you can take to protect your RV against an ant invasion. Let, let's think about how ants get into your RV first. Through every little nook and cranny. Every place that your RV is potentially touching the ground mm -hmm. or is touching a plant or a tree branch. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things you want to do is survey the exterior of your RV and figure out how they're getting in. I mean, sometimes it could be a tree branch that is lightly touching the top of your RV or something like that. There have been other situations I have seen in which ants are using the sewer hose to get into your rig. Everybody say, oh, ooh. Yeah. But, well, I've but seen it is it. a little ramp, I mean. It is, it's like a little ant escalator straight into your RV. So is your water hose, so is your power cable. The tires, in theory, they could yeah. crawl up the tires and then along your axle and then get into the underside of your RV. So, you know, the first thing you wanna do, obviously, is examine the outside, try and figure out where they're getting in and to the extent possible, take those places away from them. I mean, so you're... raise your stabilizer jacks, you know, things like that, that can sort of minimize the contact with the earth. You also, of course, need to, you know, clean up the kitchen area. If your spouse is somewhat slovenly in the kitchen, <laughs> I think so, you know what I'm talking about. Some say, of us have spouses who are a little bit slovenly. I wonder who that spouse would I'm be. I'm just saying, I've seen it. People leaving dishes, dirty dishes, <laughs> laying them about in the kitchen. My philosophy is to clean a little everywhere you go. Uh -huh. So everywhere I go, I clean as I go. I leave, say this? Is your nose I leave it's everything totally in a slightly better state than I found it. You leave everything exactly where you finished using it last. There's like a little trail. You can see where he's been because he leaves a little trail. I don't know about any of that. You can tell yeah. what you ate in the kitchen because it's like there's like these little piles of things around the kitchen of what he's had to eat. You also want to make sure that your food is stored wherever possible in like airtight plastic containers. That That's something that will help keep the ants and the mice away. Yeah, so just wrapping it in like tin foil or something like that, that's not going to cut it. It needs to be in an airtight container where they can't smell it and they can't get to it. Another ant lure to consider is any kind of portable grill that you might be carrying with you because those things can be magnets for ants and it often goes in storage in the bottom of an RV. So obviously you wanna make sure that that is either spick and span clean or removed from your RV. I'm sure that a lot of you, including our friend Elizabeth, are saying, all right, we did all that. So some people might spray insecticide. You have to really think this through. An RV is a small space. Do you really want to be spraying you know, some sort of poison throughout your small space. And a lot of yeah. people would say maybe no, especially no. if you have pets, because there are a lot of insecticides that you really don't want to be around your pets. Also, you want to be careful about putting insecticides outside your RV as well, because a lot of places will have rules against that, especially, of course, national parks, state parks. You're not allowed to do that there at all. And then a lot of independent campgrounds as well will have rules against that. So you better ask. If you do decide to go with insecticide because 
the environment around your RV is appropriate for it. I found those little sprinkle insecticides that are sort of dry pellets mm -hmm. are pretty effective at taking out ant mounds because the ants sort of take that as bait, bring it back to the colony, and it kind of kills off the colony. One other method to consider are little bait traps. And again, this is not necessarily a natural solution, but I'm talking about little self-contained bait traps that you can place in different locations throughout your RV. These work pretty well. And obviously I think you want to keep them out of reach of any pets, but you know, you could put them in your cabinetry and so forth. And we found them to be pretty effective at least at stopping the ants that get inside your RV. Yeah. And of course you could put some of those traps outside on the ground in theory if it's a safe place for you to do so. Yeah, and it's sort of, you know, contained. It's not like just spraying a chemical everywhere and you're going to be breathing it in or whatever. Right. It's a contained little box that, you know, hopefully will trap all those little critters. Ants check in, but they don't check out. <laughs> <laughs> Ants in bed. <laughs> Now, over the years, we've heard all sorts of crazy and creative methods to keep ants out of RVs. Ridiculous methods. Probably one of the more ridiculous, but creative, was to leave a box of Oreo cookies outside your RV so the ants would go for the cookies instead of going inside your RV. I wouldn't really try that. I don't think that's probably the best way to go. I'm eating the bait. Some people swear by ultrasonic repellents. You know, if you have a power or electricity where you store your RV, you might get one of those little ultrasonic thingies and plug in, and some people claim that they work. Another creative solution that we have heard is to use dryer sheets. With bounce. All natural bounce. So we actually tried this. We put out dryer sheets throughout our Airstream in the middle of one of our worst ant infestations ever, and guess what? Our camper smelled amazing. And it didn't but work. But we still had ants. So I'm sorry to report, for us anyway, did not work. the dryer sheets didn't really work. Also, if you're staying in a privately run campground and you've got an ant problem, okay. we'll go to the office and say, look, you know, we've got this ant problem. Have you guys treated it? Are you going to treat it? And maybe they will, you know, be proactive. Okay guys, welcome to a very special episode of Dump Station Adventures. Today we're visiting one of my favorite dump stations in all of North America. And something else to consider is that ants are not only seeking food, they're also seeking water. water. If you're putting your RV into storage, you might want to drain all of your water tanks. Just get the water out of the RV mm -hmm. so there's nothing there to attract the ants. Now the French call this location Station du Vendage, which is much more eloquent term, I think, than dump station. Diatomaceous, diatomaceous, diatomaceous earth. The e powder. You use this stuff in swimming pool filters sometimes. It's sort of like finely ground seashells. It's, it's like a really fine powder. I know this sounds strange. You can sprinkle this stuff around your RV. There's no chemical in it. There's no chemical. So it's all natural. Exactly. It's a natural organic substance. Some say that it absorbs lipids into the exoskeleton of the insect and kind of dehydrates them. But I've also heard it kind of cuts them a little bit. It's sort of like microscopic little shards of glass and they won't crawl through it because it like cuts them up. So they sort of start and then they back up and go away. Or if they do crawl through it, they're, they're, they're toast. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, ants. Another possible solution is a combination of borax soap and sugar water, which you would spray around your RV. And then the ants, they go for the sugar water and I guess they ingest that borax soap and, and it kills them. But we do not recommend this because this solution is toxic to pets. Right. If there's any chance that a pet might come into contact yeah. with it, just forget about this. So okay. basically, if it's anywhere besides a fenced up storage facility, 
I would say this is a no-go. Some people claim pine saw not only kills the ants, but also eliminates their scent trail. Because you know, the ants are following a scent trail to where the other ants have gone. You might use pine saw on the exterior of your rig and steer away the ants. Another kind of wild solution that we heard is to use Comet, the, like the cleaning, kitchen cleaning abrasive <laughs> material, and sprinkle it around your tires and around any areas where the ants might be getting in. We tried this and it was a flop. Didn't work for us. Ants. Ants are everywhere. And finally, the most effective method of dealing with an ant invasion is to leave. Yes, pull up stakes, roll those RV wheels <laughs> on down the highway to an ant-free campground. I mean, that's right. It's the only method that's ever worked for us. The times we've had really serious ant invasions, they've they've really all happened in California. Mm -hmm. and it's all been during a drought. And every time we pretty much just had to... We just left. ...ramble on down the highway and we moved on to other campgrounds. The ants that were stowaways eventually got caught in our little individual traps. Mm -hmm. And once we moved on to different campgrounds, we didn't have any more ant problems. Yeah. So, so it was just one of those situations where you just got to move along. Here's a great question for you guys, our audience. What do you do to keep ants out of your RV? Everybody's got different theories about this. Everybody has different methods. And I'd preferably like to hear from people that have actually had an ant problem. They use this method and it got rid of the ant. I want to hear everything. <laughs> I want to hear about the pile of Snickers bars that you used as bait. I want to hear about the Oreo cookies. I want to hear about the essential oils that you drip here and there. The whatever. dryer sheets, the peppermint candy, I don't know, the windmills, the Ouija boards, whatever it is you do to keep ants out of your RV. Because I think this is one of those topics everybody who owns an RV probably will eventually run into this problem. That's it guys. If you have some input on this topic, don't forget to post a comment. We look forward to browsing your comments and learning about your hair brains. I mean, brilliant <laughs> strategies to prevent ant invasion. Uh, so we've tried just about everything. And I hope in this video, we've provided something that might be helpful to you to help keep the ants at bay. Until next time, I am Sean. I'm Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel. We would love to have you as part of Loloho Nation. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And until next time, Lo lo ho. Lo lo ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. One other. Sorry, I had an itch yeah. and a yawn. Sorry, I have a terrible itch. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. I had one too. Ah, <laughs> ah. That feels Do we better. We have ants now. Yeah, this I think I have ants under my hat. Thinking about ants. Because I'm feeling pretty itchy. Oh. So D powder is an interesting solution to consider. Hey. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. She faked that sneeze. <laughs> so. Hey guys, if you like our videos, a great way to say thank you is to shop using our store on Amazon. You can find it at amazon.com slash shop slash long long honeymoon. Everything you need for your next RV adventure awaits in our store. But you don't have to just buy camping gear. You can use our store to buy anything that Amazon sells. When you make a purchase using our store, we receive a small commission. We're reinvesting those commissions into the production of our show. So a great way to support Long Long Honeymoon is to do all of your Amazon shopping using our store. And one other thing to remember, all purchases made in the Amazon store are completely private. So we have no idea who is buying what. So if you're looking to buy a new banana slicer, you now know where to go. Or a banana hammock. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs>